Hello friends, let's understand the active domains in fintech. Fintech, as we know, is financial technology and it includes the entire area of banking, financial services and insurance. BFSI is a huge domain and it employs over 40% of the graduate workforce across the world. There are over 150 subdomains within fintech, so it's not an area which is easy to understand. So what I have done is I have identified some of the subdomains in BFSI where fintech companies are very active. The criteria for identifying are threefold. Number one, there is an active VC interest or venture capital interest in these domains. So venture capital uh, investors are investing in these and also they are raising funds to invest into these domains. The second, there is a velocity of adoption by the customers. So customers are thronging and using these services provided by the fintech clause in these domains really enthusiastically. And third, there is a regulatory focus on these domains. So financial services regulators like RBI, for example, understand that there is a huge adoption of these fintech domains and therefore they are focused on regulating these domains so that the financial stability is maintained. Using these three criteria, I have identified eight active domains within fintech. Number one, payments. Number two, lending or credit. Number three, wealth tech or wealth management technology. Number four, open banking or digital only banking. Number five, insure tech or insurance technology. Number six, reg tech or regulatory technology. Number seven, blockchain. And number eight, CBDC or central bank digital currency. Now let's look at each of these in detail. Number one, payments. Payments is one of the places where in India huge amount of traction is there. And this traction has been accelerated because of entry of non-banking players in this industry. For example, Google is not a bank. WhatsApp is not a bank. PhonePay was not a company which was into banking. Same for Paytm. These companies came up and they got into payments in a big way and they revolutionized the industry. Now there are so many things happening in the payment space. There are contactless or frictionless payments where you don't have to basically insert your card in let's say point of sales device using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth you can make the payment. Digital cards or virtual cards you can create for example if you want to make payments you can create a virtual card number which is attached to your credit card and then you can make payments to the virtual card and your credit card details remain secure. Wearable devices for example spectacles, your watch, mobile phone these can be used for making payments. The technology being implemented includes even you know, secure authentication like using biometrics for example, uh, the retina scan or maybe voice based system so I, the uh, device is able to identify my voice and I can instruct the device to make the payment. And this is uh, also getting into mobile uh, point of sale system. So using mobile as a point of sale system, the vendors or the merchants will be able to accept the payments. Other things happening in this space, I think this is an area in which fantastic amount of innovation is happening. So I'll just mention some of them like tokenization for example, which RBI made mandatory last year in 2022. So that if you make any kind of standing instructions in favor of let's say uh, any um vendor and you uh, sort of make an instruction of for more than 5,000 uh, then the tokenization is mandatory. QR codes are being actively used. We see uh, even a small roadside vendor you know, accepting payments through QR codes. And then there are cashback and rewards linked to payments. So you know, many of these players are incentivizing by giving you cashback and rewards and they have the systems to manage that. So payments is one of the biggest uh, areas or subdomains within fintech where a lot of evolution is happening. The second subdomain or domain or active domain within uh, the fintech space is lending or credit. A lot of digital solutions have come up and they have accelerated the credit assessment process and also the entire process of credit management. So you can compare different different proposals for example easily as a customer I can you know or, or as a borrower I can look at uh, different types of options available let's say for home loan or you know personal loan or car loan for me. Uh, I can very easily apply the online application process has become easy. There is an algorithm based review or you know, credit review that happens and within seconds for example your credit can be approved. Uh, standing instructions can be very easily created uh, for making the payments. There are buy now pay later like, like schemes which are very popular in the retailer space and there is a concern about this because you know this is being extended without using much of a credit assessment. Uh, and then monitoring and any subsequent actions are also getting automated in a big way. 
So lending or credit is of course the biggest area in banking and that has been revolutionized in a big way by entry of fintech players. The third area which is an active domain within uh, the fintech area is the wealth tech or the wealth management technology. So robo advisors or the advisors which are you know, automated systems that look at what is your investment preference, what are your investment goals, how much of funds you have, uh, what is your risk appetite etc and then you know sort of advise you where you should invest and monitor your investments and even suggest the changes. They are a big range because there are low cost solutions and you know, the entire process of thinking through looking at your portfolio, looking at your savings habits, preferences etc has been automated and uh, you know a lot of people are investing by using robo advisors because the cost is substantial low they are available anytime and of course you know they understand your preferences very very well the robo retirement solutions are being designed in the same way there is a cryptocurrency and block uh, which is a part of the blockchain uh, revolution and you know that is also uh, sort of one of the uh, so, uh, assets in which people are investing now though i think it's highly speculative and you know that is also getting uh, facilitated through uh, wealth technology uh, people are uh, invest trying to invest in the ethical social and well governed companies what is called a eag investment also the you know, wealth tech is suited to uh, direct your funds into that so these technologies are becoming very very popular in wealth management area because these are low cost uh, otherwise the financial advisor cost uh, cost you a lot these are very simple to use and you know they are automated right so these are becoming very very popular in a fintech in india these are not that much adopted as yet but there's a huge scope for adaptation of wealth management technology the fourth area in fintech which is a very active domain is open banking right so we have been using open banking for some time without using that term for example we have been using let's say our electricity bills being paid through our bank through standing instructions uh, for example you know our uh, municipal taxes being paid and so on and so forth but now more things can be done you know your tax filings can be done using your bank account you can send money to your friends you can split the money for example right you can invest in cryptocurrency for example you can refinance a loan you know you can move the loan from one bank to another you can do, take up you know a lot of recurring services like your mobile phone uh, you know bill payments etc uh, retail purchases can be easily done by using open banking systems so open banking is fundamentally facilitated by evolution of apis or uh, you know application programming interfaces which are a very secure low cost and efficient way of sharing your data based on consent uh, digital wallet wallets can be of course you know you can transfer money to your digital wallets from your bank account uh, by you know setting up an instruction for example if the wallet balance goes down below 1000 rupees you know transfer there e tolls payment of tolls can be done through open banking you can set up an instruction whereby automatically if your you know the toll balance in your toll card goes down then you know you can transfer the funds from your bank account and then automated saving habits can also be you know developed right so you want to sort of put funds in some asset then you can transfer funds from your bank account so you log into that asset manager or wealth manager's portal and then you know through that go to your bank account and set up the standing instruction all these are being facilitated because of a concept of open banking where you authorize or consent to you know access to your bank account and transaction data being shared or you know some transactions being performed this is a very big sort of you know domain in the fintech area the fifth domain in which a lot of things are happening which is very active is insure tech or insurance technology. Insurance is a big area within fintech and then you know, across the entire uh, value chain of insurance there is a revolution happening because of fintech. For example the know your customer itself right so if you make an online application for example a lot of things are now facilitated in the automatic way. Uh, in many cases the KYC is being done through let's say for example uh, video that you can upload and you know you can let's say hold your other card so you know that establishes authenticity that the same person and you know that can be also stored for records in we have done the kyc for the customer so speed and accuracy has improved in that regard uh, policy underwriting decisions are being taken by using you know artificial intelligence and machine learning and only some of the cases where the risk is being flagged by the uh, ai and email systems they are being sort of investigated before the underwriting uh, commitment is given the smart contracts are being used for issue of the insurance policies for example in india uh, we can sort of store our policies online right so government has made provisions for that the fraud detection prevention etc the you know the analysis of the claims that are being made etc is being done by using the ai and email system just like that even the claims review once you submit the claim that claim is being reviewed by the machine learning systems you know by looking at let's say photograph of the damage to your car or damage to your two wheeler and then most of these claims get automatically approved if there is nothing suspicious or in some cases they get flagged and then you know the human involvement is there to verify the claim so a lot of these you know iot internet of 
connecting devices you know that these kind of devices are being de deployed by insurance companies let's say you want uh, you know insurance for your motor car a chip which is fitted in your motor car can inform the insurance company about your driving habits for example when you drive a night time drive is considered riskier so, for example right if you brake very frequently or accelerate very fast that is riskier if while turkey taking the turns for example you don't slow down that is riskier right so those kind of habits the insurance company can track and accordingly they can either increase or decrease your uh, insurance premium like that based on the variable devices for example your health can be tracked and then you know accordingly health insurance and life insurance premiums can be increased or decreased right of course you have to give consent for this and you need to agree the terms of the insurance companies so this is something called you know usage based or risk based insurance that is becoming quite popular across the world in india for example usage based insurance to some extent has been approved by irda specifically for the cars so we can see policies hopefully coming which reward the uh, car drivers you know who have good driving habits so a lot of things happening in the insure tech domain within fintech the next domain area the sixth domain area within insure tech where a lot of things are happening uh, within sorry fintech where a lot of things are happening is reg tech or regulatory technology regulators themselves are taking to technology in a big way because regulators have to police right so they have to make sure that the regulations are being implemented so they are putting in data mining and analytic solutions so regulators get for example uh, let's say sebi right they get lot of data from the stock exchanges about what's happening on the exchanges so they can you know understand and look at whether some kind of patterns emerge which indicate whether some kind of uh, violation of laws is happening right so they you can look at whether for example circular trading is being done or warehousing activity is being done and you know there is a law against this kind of activities uh, the machine learning ai and robotics is being used by the regulators also to monitor the suspicious activities uh, they are using at you know getting the data through apis or application programming interfaces the regulators are using the cloud technology because you know cloud has its own advantages like now there is a great, great amount of security access based control the flexibility you know, the uh, the performance uh, enhancement etc are possible uh, also visualization solutions are also being used by the regulators and they are using the high tech you know technology like in memory data grid or maybe in memory computing grid right which sort of gives tremendous power if you deploy you know lot of raw memory in your computers to do lot of computations and run algorithm and then find out some kind of trends or some kind of discrepancies so regulators themselves are using reg tech in a big way the seventh uh, domain area within fintech where, where a lot of activity is happening is obviously blockchain and one of the important uh, sort of use cases of blockchain is cryptocurrency about which we keep hearing all the time for example bitcoin is a name that we keep hearing all the time but apart from that there are a lot of you know domains that relate to fintech where you, know, you can have the application of blockchain for example the property transactions property ownership uh, entering into smart contracts you know legal con legal contracts uh, tracking the origin of materials for example based on which the payments can be made uh, and you know the uh, buying and selling of arts using some something called uh, nfts right so all that can be facilitated using the blockchain as a technology so cryptocurrency is just one part of the blockchain technology one use case or one application but there is a lot of scope for leveraging of blockchain for example for issuing letter of credit issuing bank guarantee also you can use blockchain to issue that the eighth and last active domain within fintech that i see is cbdc or central bank digital currency the central banks all over the world have been wary of people thronging to cryptocurrency in a big way because it is highly speculative instrument and prone to ma manipulation so central banks uh, all over the world have been exploring how we can compete with cryptocurrency so that you know people have an alternative of digital currency while at the same time the financial system is not destabilized and the funds are not used for illegal activities which cryptocurrency is typically being used for so over 10 countries have by far you know issued cbdc or central bank digital currency and india is one of the bigger economies which has actually you know issued cbdc one of the uh, you know leading economies which has done that so rbi has issued digital rupee in december 2022 with the goal of complementing or maybe even replacing the physical currency and also for the financial inclusion so you don't need to have a bank account if you want to hold the cbdc or the indian e rupee right so but you will not earn any interest because you are not putting it in the bank so you know nobody is sort of making money on that and you know out of it they can make you payment of interest so 
CBDC or central bank digital currency like the one which RBI has issued is uh, fundamentally a legal currency in the digital form and it is exchangeable with the uh, normal currency at 1 is to 1 exchange rate which gives us a lot of stability. So for example Bitcoin you know rate keeps up, up going up and down and in fact that is one of the reasons people invest in Bitcoin is the, for the speculation. The uh, CBDC is acceptable as a medium of payment it's a legal tender in the country and it uh, is a safe store of value because of the 1 is to 1 exchange rate with the currency which is backed by the sovereign or the government. Uh, it can be used offline for example you don't need to have the mobile connectivity or electricity even for using CBDC. So those kind of use cases are being implemented by RBI as well. So this is the eighth domain in fintech where there is a lot of interest happening. Now understanding this will help you understand which are the growth areas in fintech, you know, which kind of roles will open up in that, what kind of skills I will require, for example, if you look at blockchain, you know, what skills you, technical skills you need if you want to be uh, sort of, you know, in this area and you want to benefit from the fintech action. So you can acquire those skills and get a great career. That is the reason I have, you know, sort of tried to sensitize you to the active domains within fintech. Hope you found this video useful. If yes, please do like this video. Also, share with your friends who will find this useful and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and cheers.